Welcome to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. I'm Katie Virtue, a consultant with Festive Road and a member of the GBTA Technology Committee, and I'll be your host for today's episode. I'm excited today to bring you our first podcast related to the GBTA Tech Committee's Tech Safari series. We started this series a few years ago where we went out into the industry and wanted to provide more insight and education around new technology solutions and providers that were entering business travel. We've done numerous webinars and sessions at GBTA conference, and now we're excited to kick off a podcast series where we'll be talking with different technology providers about their solutions. And today I have with me Ron Glickman from Snowfall, and we're going to learn more about Snowfall and what they do, what they offer the business travel sector, and understand the offerings that they have uh, for business travel. So Ron, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So to get us started, the, the the term, the company Snowfall might be pretty new for some. Um, can you just tell us a, a little bit more about yourself and, and about Snowfall? Sure. Um, so Snowfall is uh, not really a startup per se, um, because the company has been around for over 15 years. Um, the business travel community wouldn't necessarily have come into contact with Snowfall name and brand, um, but certainly has come into contact with the products that Snowfall's created over the years. Um, for instance, uh, we've been providing the, the PSS or the passenger service system for a number of rail and ferry providers across uh, Europe. Um, we have supplied the solutions for ancillary products of airlines um, for uh, consumption through their own web platforms uh, for years. Uh, as well as super apps for the airlines too. So we've always been a part of a very customer-centric traveler experience um, aspect of the industry, um, but really through you know the the last I would say fifteen years, we've been more um, you know focused on on the services that we're providing to the suppliers. Um, and then during the pandemic, the you know things have have kind of shifted and actually it was a, a customer um, that kind of spurred this uh, this innovation on forward uh, into uh, the the junction ecosystem that uh, we're, we're talking about a lot to, about today. Oh, interesting to, to hear. So was it a customer that had a specific need or problem that you said, you know, we'd like to try and, and solve that? Certainly with a lot of the travel providers, when you get involved and you start to look at the technologies that they've employed, you take a look at it and you go, wow, well, that's very interesting. That's not necessarily either built very well or it's not scalable or, um, you know, there's definitely room for improvement. And one of the suppliers that we had in the rail space um, you know, had some requests um, in terms of distribution and how their products could, you know, be consumed in more markets and, and things to do there. And when the Snowfall team, um, you know, was helping this uh, client along, certainly they, you know, saw that there, there were limitations in what could be done and not pleased with how the content was then being redisplayed or, or consumed by the end user. Because uh, we are a very customer-centric uh, company. We, we pride ourselves on building tools um, that customers like and enjoy. So um, through that experience with uh, that particular provider, um, the, the concept of, uh, of Junction Go was born with regards to the, the APIs and, and how we're going about um, you know, marketing and, and selling uh, of uh, products to, to the, not just the business travel community, but to the, the wider travel community. Okay, so I'm I'm definitely going to ask you about Junction because you've mentioned that twice. But before we we get into that, I know maybe a, a burning question would be, 
and um, certainly if if this doesn't apply, we can talk about that. But are you a TMC? Are you an OBT? Are you a platform? Are you something else? Because I, that's where a lot of minds go, right? To to understand the the technology fit within what's been the typical construct of business travel. Sure. Um, so no, we're not a TMC. Um, we view ourselves really as democratizing uh, travel and being really this, this wider ecosystem that people can plug into um, and they can consume content or they can push content to it. Um, but that being said, we do have, when you think about Junction, it is a number of modules. And one of those modules is Junction One, which is the front end platform um, that is an online booking tool to be utilized by the, uh, the business travel community. Um, so, so yes, there is a, there's an OBT, uh, platform, uh, in there that, um, is GDS and TMC agnostic. Um, we certainly view our role as an enabler, um, in, in the travel space, uh, for the, the, the TMCs, uh, for the corporations, uh, for, for everybody really. And, um, you know, we, we don't view ourselves as a, a competitor and it's not, you know, a zero sum game with a winner take all. Um, there, there's really a whole lot that we could be doing with everybody uh, in the ecosystem. Got it. OK, so Junction One is an OBT in terms of you could work directly with a, a buyer um, or it might be something that's resold through an agency or maybe even would it be white labeled? Um, as well? Yeah, potentially you would even have it as, uh, uh, you would have it in at your fingertips and you'd be utilizing it in some cases and you wouldn't even know because it's been white labeled and, and right. Uh, right. yeah, repackaged for, uh, for the client. But uh, yeah, so, so you would come into contact uh, with it as a travel buyer on a direct basis. Uh, through a reseller with a with a TMC, or even through a white label, and not even know that you're really utilizing the platform. Using it, okay. So let's jump into the Junction products. You've talked about Junction One as the OBT. What are the other Junction products that you have? Sure. So when we think about the travel journey, um, obviously you need the platform to book everything. So Junction One would be where you would start your journey and you would book uh, according to uh, policy uh, with the next gen storefront showing you, you know, your options sorted to your preferences and your tastes. Um, but then behind that, you would have Junction Go. So Junction Go is, uh, is the APIs that um, would power uh, the results in Junction One. Um, and it's not just the air, car, uh, hotel, and then the rail, obviously, that everybody's been as of late talking about so much. Um, but Junction Go uh, includes content such as buses, national bus lines, uh, ferry services, um, micro mobility, uh, you know, to, to really cover the first and last mile. And it's also experiences, the ability to. Uh, bring in and and I know the industry hates this word so much, um, but to bring in the leisure experiences as well um, that could be consumed through there. So, like for instance, I had a, a great call today with uh, with a tour operator who's very big, and they have you know set departure dates and and all of this, and you know they would love if one of these business travelers at the end of their trip just decided to join them on one of their walking tours through, you know, the city of Manhattan or wherever. So um, it, the Junction Go is really the content uh, repository that makes it uh, all possible. So it's not just GDS, it's not just uh, NDC, but it's all these other connections and, and experiences that are brought in. Um, after that, you've got uh, Junction Plus. Um, and the, the concept that we use when talking about Junction Plus is really this in tune on time. Um, a lot of, you know, the travel experience today is, is just being enhanced so much on a daily basis and really huge shout out to the airlines for their apps and how they make it so customer centric. And, and we've seen so many great enhancements with, um, 
with uh, trip uh, uh, interruptions and being able to rebook through their apps and stuff like that. Um, we believe that you know there's there's opportunity to take this a bit further. Um, so with Intune on time and on the Junction Plus module, what we're doing is we're making the smart suggestions for the traveler based on uh, their own journey. So travel's you know about to start. Um, I'm sharing my location services, uh, you know, via Junction One. I'm able to then get a, a message um, that traffic is building up on the way to the airport. It's time to leave. Hey, if you book the the Uber now, you should arrive on time. Or maybe traffic is actually building up in the airport itself. So perhaps I'm about to get into Frankfurt, and it knows that there are security lines that are, you know, backed up really far. So why don't I go ahead now and purchase a fast track so I can go ahead and I can skip and I can make my flight. And it's all about really providing these notifications at the right time because nobody wants to receive this stuff when it's not the right time. Um, and likewise, you know, automatic rebooking and automatic reseating uh, are some of the things that, um, that Junction Plus does as well. So um, perhaps I'm uh, seated in uh, an aisle seat, but I prefer a window um, so that ability to to have the system constantly look at my flight and uh, book me into that window seat when it becomes available. Our CEO is actually a huge fan of this one and uses it all the time. Um, but um, you know the the ability to proactively look out for the traveler while they're on their journey. And there's so many amazing um, you know ways to to do this and and co companies out there to connect to, to, to make this all work that the, uh, I really do foresee that the traveler experience in the next five years is just going to keep enhancing and, and become a lot better. Um, and then there's Junction Pay, uh, the final platform that, uh, or module that, uh, that I'm going to mention. Um, so this is our uh, FinTech platform. Um, this is, you know, the ability to, um, give our, our customers competitive payment terms and competitive uh, FX rates and, and safeguards of, of funds with virtual wallets. Um, this is something that um, has been actually feedback that we've gotten along the way from a lot of the corporate buyers out there that they they had no idea how much they were paying in FX rates and, and how much money their companies were losing um, through these cross-border payments to suppliers and, and so on. Um, so we view, you know, we view this as a as a really a, a welcome addition to the, the travel community uh, to be able to provide more options there uh, in the same way that virtual payments have really shaken up the uh, community and brought a lot of value to uh, travel programs. So um, those, those are the modules of uh, Junction. It, it really is the full ecosystem from start to finish. Um, and it really is focused on the traveler journey from, uh, from A to Z. Okay, great. And, and I, yeah, I love to look at the, the A to Z, you know, we're hearing a lot about experience and um, the growing importance of that in programs, um, especially as, you know, companies realize the need to engage employees, retain, attract them. Um, and if they're travelers, then, you know, they they definitely need to consider the, the travel aspect of that employee experience. So I have a couple questions under each of the Junction products. The first one, Junction 1, that being kind of that, that OBT um, product, what's, you know, um, some of the, the differentiation in terms of, is it just the look and feel of it? We hear, you know, different requests around what machine learning and APIs can do um, and what AI can do in terms of, I, I want a more personalized experience in, in an OBT. Um, you know, tell me a little bit more about maybe what's different about Junction 1 versus some of the other OBTs in, in the market? Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm not going to comment necessarily about the other OBTs in the market. Um, you know, that there are obviously some phenomenal tools out there and they, you know, constantly get better. Um, I will say, you know, what we're really focused on is reduction of the number of clicks 
that mm. somebody has to do um, when booking business travel. Um, I, and it's not just us. You know, we know that others are focused on this as well. Um, we saw this with uh, Microsoft and Citric, um, and how you know everybody's looking for working the business travel into the the just the general flow of how an employee goes about their day in their company, and whether that takes place in a medium like Slack, where people are typically in Slack all day and you know, the ability to start a Zoom meeting just by typing in Zoom, um, you know, well, why shouldn't you just be able to book all the business travel in there um, and, and, you know, do it with as, as few clicks as possible utilizing historical data? Um, so we are certainly focused uh, on that um, and constantly making enhancements. And I will say that what kind of sets us uh, apart in that regard is really the, the trip board aspect. So the trip board is the, the container that contains all the elements around the trip. And because it contains all the elements around the trip, it even contains the micro mobility aspect. And, you know, some of the things that I, I spoke to companies uh, across uh, you know, the, the, the travel community, um, you know, one of the things that kind of came up in, in all these discussions around micro mobility is, um, you know, how many times people are taking these like little scooters or e-bikes when they're doing business travel, and then they've got these little charges that then have to go back, um, you know, and get reconciled if they did it on a personal or, or they did it outside the platform. Well, what if that was just something that went into the container of the trip? And then it was just there and it all got reconciled automatically. Um, and it goes back to the ledger in the right place. And, you know, there's nothing more for the employee to do because the online booking experience has become kind of their right hand and they're able to go through all of that and they're able to get all the content um, that they need at the right time. Um, so, so content is a big, you know, factor in there. And, um, you know, going also back to, to what I had said earlier about the, the reduction of the number of trips, the ability to create a uh, trip board strictly based on the destination or maybe no destination, um, you know, depending on if you're inviting other people in um, or if your dates are flexible and so on, and being able to have the system come back to you with the suggestion of the you know, trip options. Hey, here are your flights. Uh, which are in policy based on your personal preferences. So if you prefer American Airlines, then it's going to be maybe American Airlines from JFK to Austin. Um, and then you're going to have in there your, your preferred, if it was uh, Marriott, all within policy. And, you know, in the conversations that we have with customers, it's like, well, they have their spend T&E data for the last 20 years. Well, then why don't we just ping that when we're creating that trip board and be able to go into a trip board that's completely within budget. We know it is, so it requires no approval. It's just, you know, the suggestions are made around the, 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 the traveler uh, preferences and they can reshop if they want, but we get rid of all the clicks and the trip board is then just there. And we've reduced so much of what, you know, time wasted <laughs> in the workplace. I, I can't even say how much time uh, uh, I've wasted over the years just looking at my flight options, my hotel options, trying to plan out and, and beat the system by finding the cheapest hotel a year in advance of GBTA even announcing where the, desk, where the next uh, conference is. Um, but, you know, what if we could do all of that and reduce the number of clicks and have people focus on uh, what they should be instead of everybody being a travel agent? Um, you know, that that's what uh, Junction One is uh, is really doing. It's bringing all of the content in, it's displaying it, but it's also making the smart suggestions uh, to the customers um, at the right times. Awesome. Thank you. Sounds, sounds uh, yeah, definitely like it's, very helpful to um, programs, to travelers and, and what people have been, you know, looking for from um, the ability of an OBT to use past information along with machine learning and, and AI. One of the questions I had on the plus, Junction Plus, because um, because again, it sounds um, great in terms of targeting the, the traveler on their journey. And we're seeing more and more of that. How do I influence and, and support and help their experience 
through apps, through suppliers. Um, is is a lot of that automated, or do you you know have people that have to, I guess, provide you know that type of service and support, or is it it generally all automated through technology in terms of different alerts and information that that a traveler would get? Yeah, so it's all automated through technology. Um, Snowfall for years has been participating in um, events across the uh, the spectrum, like future traveler experience um, and other areas um, of the industry that I don't know necessarily that the business community would would be aware of, because these events are typically uh, targeting the suppliers or the airports, um, you know, directly. Um, and, you know, through the partnerships that we've established there and through, you know, what we've we've learned being a supplier to all these travel providers over the years um, was how much data we could get our hands on and how much we could partner with these suppliers and enhancing the traveler experience. Um, so we're really, really excited about what the future holds and and what we see every single time we go to these events and new partners that we can work with um, in enhancing enhancing that traveler experience. I just have to say it, it's 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 phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> at the last one in Singapore, um, you know, uh, there was a company that provides certain uh, um, they provide certain things in the airport for travelers, and and somebody came up with this idea about if there's a disruption, and then the airline can give the voucher directly to the traveler via the phone, and what then could happen by connecting that supplier to the business traveler, and all. And I just have to say that if if your suppliers are not participating in these types of events and coming up with with you know the solutions to the everyday experience of, of, you know, just the general traveler, then they're going to miss the mark on the business traveler as well. So, um, you know, really, you know, it, it's really early days, um, but there's so much that's going to happen in this space and it's just going to continue to improve. And, and if it's not us, it's the airlines, they're going to improve and the hotels are going to improve and, and the lounges, everybody's is just getting so much smarter and, by sharing, you know, these APIs and working together, we're going to just make the journey so much better for everybody involved. So let me ask you, Ron, do you, does a corporate buyer need to have a TMC to work with Snowfall? 100%. There is so much still um, value and need for the TMC in this equation. Um, and it goes well beyond um, just the the ticketing authority um, or the the ARC slash BSP and and all that kind of stuff. Um, the 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 value that the the agent brings into this equation, we are just the enabler. We are just the ones who are enhancing the experience and and supplementing what the TMC is already providing to their corporate customer. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's no way forward without the TMC. Got it. Okay. No, that's good. And I think that helps in terms of thinking about um, as companies kind of architect their different uh, technology service providers, think about how they pull that all together for, for travel. Yeah. And I actually had a conversation with somebody today um, who said to me, well, we've been rethinking this because we have so much headcount. Maybe we should be taking the calls because of the SLAs that the TMC is not able to adhere to and all of this. And I, I mean, right away, I just turned it back to them and I said, listen, in, in, in an ARC market, like, yeah, you could have a CTD. You could you know, do it. This is not a small customer by any stretch of the imagination. They could easily become one of the largest TMCs right off the bat. But I don't think they had given much thought to um, everything that it would entail um, from a you know a fulfillment aspect. Right. Um, they you know they they can't have their own uh, IATA in the BSP markets. It's just simply not allowed. Um, there, there would be so many headwinds for them. 
um, that uh, it, it was interesting that they brought it up, no, no doubt, but um, I, I don't see a way forward for that. I think that the, the TMC plays an integral role um, in everything that uh, we're looking to do as an industry. All right. Um, one more question before we start to wrap up is you started talking at the beginning about just some of the technology in the industry, right? And, and how it hasn't advanced as well. And that's held us back in some regards. There's there's other great things starting to happen. One of those areas we've talked about in business travel that potentially holds us back is the PNR. You know, does does is, is a lot of the work that um in, in the products you talked about within Snowfall utilize the PNR or are you thinking past that um as you know some are starting to talk about it, how do we how do we move to a world without it that could enable much more um i will say um the pnr is dead um the, the concept is is dated it serves no purpose going forward um really you know pe people had said like oh there's the pnr now there will be the super pnr no it's it's nothing to do with that anymore because there's no need for it the the data and what we can do with the data uh, has so vastly has changed so much um over the last few years that um you know this this concept of the pnr and i i i talk to airlines all the time cuz you know obviously they they have platforms and, and we bid on products for them and stuff like that. Um, and I, I try to get it out of their lexicon as well to, to say like, you know, guys, this concept that you talk about, the PNR, opening the ticket, closing the ticket, and all that, this has to just go by the wayside because it's holding you back as well. It's it's not benefiting you. You're if you're thinking in PNR terms, you're not thinking forward, and then you're not enhancing your own retailing possibilities as a as a supplier to your customer base. So, um, I, I'm uh, if you were to poll a GBTA, I would say I am one of the people who believes the PNR is dead. All right, interesting. Okay, that's that that could be a whole podcast in and of itself. I I assume, but just wanted to get the views, um, just because it's you know, interesting how, how you've described, you know, the ecosystem, the different um, content you're bringing in, the use of APIs, and so where your thought was on that. But, um, well, my final question for you, Ron, um, and I know this uh, podcast will, will be released, a, a, you know, in a few weeks, but um, as we're recording it, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. So, Ron, what is it? Turkey, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, stuffing. What's the favorite Thanksgiving food you want to eat tomorrow? Okay. So number one, um, my mom's from Detroit. Um, so to me, for some odd reason, as a New Yorker, Thanksgiving is the Detroit Lions. It is <laughs> turkey and mashed potatoes. Stuffing has to be there. Cranberries have to be there. I don't touch it though personally. Um, but it it it's the Detroit Lions and my memories of going to the Silver Dome as a little kid with my grandfather from time to time and and stuff like that are indelibly etched into my brain. I can never get rid of it. Um, so to me, Thanksgiving is football, family, and food, and I am. Oh, and I will say this, no marshmallows on the, uh, you, you know how people do that? Like, I'm so not into it. Oh, yeah. I remember as a kid scraping the marshmallows off to only eat those because I didn't want the sweet potato. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I'm not into the marshmallows on the sweet potatoes. They can be on the table. I'm not going to touch it anyway because I don't like sweet potatoes. But yeah, I mean, that was the toughest question you asked this entire podcast, <laughs> I have to admit. And it's probably going to evoke the, the largest response is going yeah. to be, what are you talking about? The, the marshmallows are, are important, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, no, it's football, family, and food. Looking forward to it. Well, thank you, Ron. Um, it was great to talk to you, and I I hope it's it's a good Thanksgiving and a, a win for for the Lions. Um, and it was really great to hear more about Snowfall. 
um, and what it is that you offer and are bringing bringing to the business travel sector. Um, and that's really our goal as the tech committee. Um, and with this tech safari series is to share more information, educate the GBTA members uh, about new solutions that are coming out. So thank you, everyone. You've been listening to The Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. For more information about GBTA and its work, visit gbta.org. And be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, thanks for listening.